The Rich Planet Starship is sponsored by Geared4.com online bikes, clothing and accessories. Welcome on board the Rich Planet Starship, broadcasting from somewhere high above the Earth. I'm Richard D. Hall, and we've been reliably informed by viewers of Edge Media Television that in certain households, when people switch Edge Media Television on, a member of the household will walk out of the room in disgust. This presumably is because they can't handle the truth. Now, at the Rich Planet Starship, we've come up with a solution for this. Good evening. Every week at the beginning of the six o'clock news, we'll be hearing from our special new correspondent, Richard D. Hall, who has been tasked by BBC bosses to break all BBC news traditions and report the absolute truth with no spin. Over to you, Richard. Uh, thank you, George. Um, the much hyped first ever election leadership debate was screened on the 15th of April. The atmosphere in the studio was most peculiar, as the audience had clearly been hand-picked and then told not to speak, react or ask questions. The three leaders demonstrated in their debate that there is now no alternative party. They broadly agree on almost everything. Why is there no party or person telling them that the war on terror is bogus and has been created by a series of false flag events? carried out by our own intelligence agencies, including 9-11 and 7-7, that the occupation of Iraq and Afghanistan are illegal under international law, that the Trident nuclear program is illegal under international law, that the immigration problem is to a degree exaggerated by the media in order to maintain fear of Islam so that the public continues to support the illegal occupations that the financial crisis and economic boom and bust cycle could be easily solved by simply removing the Bank of England and ending the issuance of currency as debt, then allowing the government to issue its own currency, thus removing the richest families in the world who have cajoled themselves into owning the Bank of England and Federal Reserve, which then enslave the population in an economic prison without bars and that there is a move by globalists who operate above government to remove sovereign nations by stealth and create a single world government behind our backs. Where was the candidate with these views? We reported two weeks ago about the case of Holly Grieg, a Down syndrome lady aged 30 who suffered sexual abuse from her father and a paedophile ring based in Aberdeen. The abuse started in 1986 and continued until the year 2000. Grieg has named 14 of her abusers, who include a Scottish sheriff called Graham Buchanan, a high-ranking police officer, now deceased, and social workers, and several others. The Scottish legal system, under the direction of Lord Advocate Elish Angelini, is providing protection of this paedophile ring. Robert Green, who was campaigning for perpetrators of Holly Greek's abuse to be brought to justice, was arrested in February. He was headed to Aberdeen City Centre to hand out leaflets to the public and was arrested on a charge of breach of the peace and subsequently held for three days. Robert Green was arrested again last week on the Thursday the 15th of April and released on bail a second time, we believe for breaching his bail conditions which state that he should not talk to the media about the case. The police stations dealing with his arrest and detention received a stream of phone calls from the public protesting at the police's draconian behaviour. To find out more about this disturbing case, which goes to the highest levels of our government, please Google Holly Grieg and spread the information to friends and family as the mainstream news media have been censored from covering the story. On the 15th of April, Barack Obama announced to a small audience, by the mid-2030s, I believe we can send humans to orbit Mars and return them safely to Earth, and a landing on Mars will follow, 
and I expect to be around to see it. This comes just a few weeks after cancelling future missions to the Moon. In addition to budgets for the Space Shuttle, International Space Station and other publicly known projects by NASA, there is a secret project or a secret budget known as the Black Budget consisting of trillions of dollars raised outside of Congress in a variety of nefarious ways. This means that what NASA allow the public to see is only window dressing for a much bigger and more advanced clandestine program to dominate and weaponize space. When Gary McKinnon accessed NASA computers in 2002, he found a list of officers' names under the heading Non-Terrestrial Officers that included fleet-to-fleet -fleet transfers and a list of ship names that were not US Navy ships. McKinnon believes that the ships and personnel files he saw were from a space program that operates off-planet spaceships and maintains several secret space stations. What adds weight to McKinnon's claims is what the late Ben Rich said. Rich was the second director of Lockheed's Skunk Works, who develop America's secret aircraft. In 1993, he said, We already have the means to travel among the stars, but these technologies are locked up in black projects, and it would take an act of God to ever get them out to benefit humanity. Anything you can imagine, we already know how to do. Obama's announcement about missions to Mars and the dog and pony show which will follow is nothing but a diversion from the secret space program in order to keep the public in the dark. It's time to introduce this week's guest onto the show. He is a researcher of UK military bases. His website, secretbases.co.uk, contains a vast compilation of aerial photography and research into the military and intelligence agencies. So without further ado, let's activate the teleporter and get him beamed up onto the ship. Alan Turnbull. Oh. Welcome hello. on the Starship, Alan. Thank you, Richard. Are you well? I'm not too bad. It's a marvellous way to get up here. I avoided the volcanic ash. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, Alan, um, we're here to talk about your fantastic website, um, which I've spent hours and hours on, I have to say, because there's a phenomenal amount of information on there. Um, could you start by telling us just how you got into creating this website? Well, it uh, started back in uh, 2003. Um, it was that year that I became first connected uh, up to the internet by, by broadband. And as you know, uh, many customers on broadband um, get free uh, web space mm -hmm. with uh, their con connection. Mm -hmm. uh, that happened to me, and I thought I'd already had uh, lots of interest in the media mm -hmm. and uh, particular interest in secret locations, but in my uh, case, it was television locations at that time. Okay. But I moved on to uh, interest in aerial photography and mapping. I've always had an interest in mapping. Mm -hmm. So I married those things together mm -hmm. and uh, decided to do a website based upon anomalies that I'd found mm -hmm. uh, okay. between Orden survey maps and the emerging technology of aerial photographs. Okay. And, and one of the things that you looked into in the early days was the Faslane Coolport Naval Base, I believe. Yeah, we, we have an image here of mm. uh, Orden Survey. Well, if, you, if you look at um, that, that comparison of two versions of Orden Survey mapping, you, uh -huh. <laughs> it's uh, one of them actually appears like an empty hillside, yes. whereas the other one looks a hive of activity, and there's plenty of things going on in the middle there. Right, but. That reveals that for decades, uh -huh. uh, Ordnance Survey had a policy of removing sensitive sites right. uh, from their, their mapping uh -huh. and okay. replacing them just with apparent empty uh, either farmers' fields or, uh -huh. or hill sites. Now that policy, it was a government policy, uh, and Ordnance Survey is essentially uh, a government agency. Uh -huh. um, the policy originated in the 1960s, although it was actually a, a throwback to the days of Winston Churchill in the, in the war. But uh, an MI5 Director General, uh, Sir Martin Furnival Jones in the 60s, introduced a formal policy uh -huh. 
of instructing Ordnance Survey to remove anything that could be considered slightly sensitive, uh -huh. whether it be something obvious like uh, nuclear weapons uh, yeah. area or something okay. as straightforward as um, a nuclear power station. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that policy was in place all through the Cold War, obviously, as you would expect, yes. right up until 2006 when it was suddenly dropped on the quiet. Right. Uh, and it transpired that my website had a small part in that there. change of government policy, yeah. purely because I highlighted on the website uh, all these anomalies and the mm -hmm. futility. Yeah, uh, because as it was publicly available, uh, the, 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 you know, the information about what is there is publicly mm. available. I think you mentioned that the KGB had detailed well, the, maps. Yeah, I mean, moreover, the, the, the huge irony, even more so, uh, is the fact that all throughout the Cold War, all mm. that period that we're talking about, 60s, 70s, 80s, mm. the KGB uh, in the old Soviet Union were mm. busy compiling right. maps that were as good as, in some cases, technically mm. better, more mm. detailed than Ordnance Survey. So, so the internet and your website gave rise to the fact that they started putting these things back on Ordnance Survey uh, maps because yeah. it was pointless yeah. trying to cover them up. Yeah, the, okay. the actual uh, government policy changed in 2006 and since around about that time, Ordnance Survey has been on a, a rolling program of updates mm -hmm. and lots of these uh, secret bases uh, mm -hmm. have been reintroduced. Okay, so we're, we're going to take a look at some images from your website, um, Armin. So tell us, tell us about this next image here. Okay, that carries on the theme of uh, the Coolport base. Uh, mm -hmm. where you have images uh, on the left and right at the top there of the, the map uh, which has a suspicious blank space over the left side mm -hmm. whereas you compare it with the the right hand image which is the obviously the aerial photography mm -hmm. uh, that shows something of great yeah. interest in that apparent blank There's space. There's definitely something there. Yeah mm -hmm. and that's actually um, uh, an old nuclear weapons store. Okay okay and moving on what's what, what do we have here? Well the marvellous irony of of this is that my website being about secret bases, is in fact hosted in a data server centre, mm -hmm. which is in itself an old secret base, and that's the old USAF nuclear command and control yeah. bunker at Greenham Common, mm -hmm. which is one of the most famous secret okay. bases in the world. Um, we've only got time to go through a few of the images on your site, and there are thousands of images on your site, Alan, it's phenomenal. And if anyone who wants to learn about secret or, or, or military bases, because the fact that they're there isn't secret, is it? It's, but perhaps what goes yeah. on in them might be secret. Exactly, that's, that's precisely the case. Uh, the government will, will say, uh, and he's quite right, there aren't any secret bases in the UK, because how would you keep them secret? We're, we're, in the case of America, massive land space, it's quite easy to squirrel things away underground and they'll, they'll not be discovered for decades, whereas you don't have difficulty doing that in this country. But as you say, everything that goes on in our military bases and government laboratories is covered by the uh, Official Secrets Act. And we'll maybe come on to underground bases in, in, in part three, Alan, but there, what, what image do we have here? What's the, what significance well, is that? Well, that um, is an MI5 vehicle maintenance depot, which your viewers may be surprised that we're showing a picture of that. But if you show the next image, mm -hmm. you'll, yeah. you'll see that it's no longer there because right. uh, it's in the last year or so it's been demolished because it was abandoned mm -hmm. and MI5 have moved their operations to somewhere else in the southeast of England. Okay, right. And there was a, there was a case with the, was this involving the, um, the Google mapping car or was that later on, Alan? No, this, uh, this image we're looking at now is, this, this uh, one? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, an implementation. What I've used the technology of Google Maps as it's uh, emerged to create uh, an instance of Google Maps within my website. Okay. Uh, and that's, that maps out for you there all the key notes of interest around the town of Corsham. Right. Which is, if you type Corsham secrets mm. into yeah. Google, you know, for example, you, you get lots of uh, results. It's, um, it's a very important... Uh, base for the UK government. Okay, so what do all of these red marks represent on, the, on this map? Those uh, are actual marks of identification of particular features that can be seen 
okay. on aerial photographs. Right. And the, the most, possibly the most famous one out there, is the so-called Corsham Computer Centre, which mm -hmm. makes it sound like a, a sort of PC world of the West Country. But right. um, okay. <laughs> as as I reveal uh, in well, the, the next uh, document we're looking at there is actually. Again, it's a publicly available document, and that's the Caution Master Plan, okay. which is the next generation of uh, military facilities in the town. Uh -huh. uh, and, then, and what would you hazard goes on here then, at that place? That is actually uh, just a, a reworking, a regeneration of uh, the facilities that were have been there for, for decades. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it consolidates various military bases around the Caution area onto one site. Uh, the Basil Hill uh, Barracks. Okay. Right, well, uh, we're going to go for a short break now, Alan, but before we do, I'm just going to put uh, this particular image up and just um, ask people to wonder what on earth this jet aircraft was doing in the middle of a forest. Find out after the break. The Rich Planet Starship is sponsored by Geared4.com online bikes, clothing, and accessories. The Rich Planet Starship is sponsored by Geared4.com online bikes, clothing and accessories. Welcome back on board the Starship and we're talking with Alan Turnbull who's an expert on UK military bases or a researcher of UK military bases and we're talking about uh, before the break Alan about this particular image here mm. where it seems to show um, a jet aircraft without a runway in the middle of a forest. Yeah. What's that, going on there? Uh, that's been available on uh, various aerial photography uh, imagery, imagery for several years now. And lots of people have uh, thought that it may be a kind of fire trainer facility that you see at places like Manchester International mm -hmm. Airport and, and Heathrow. It's, it's very similar in construction um, to those, but it's not actually, it's in reality, if I told you the, the county that it's in, it's Herefordshire. Okay. Uh, and that should start alarm bells ringing. It is indeed uh, an SAS Special Forces facility for the training in counterterrorism mm -hmm. okay. operations, such as hostage rescue. Right. So how would that thing? Would could that thing t just take off vertically? Then is it? Not, so I certainly hope not. No. So, <laughs> so how has it got there? I presumably it was it was brought in uh -huh. on um, a very large lorry. Right. Or in B, either so, that or it was probably brought in in, in right. pieces and assembled on site because it, I think. So what's the point of having it there if it can't ever take off then? Or it's just used for training scenarios oh, so right. that uh, the SAS troops will uh, practice storming it, for example. All oh, right. Okay. Uh, and releasing hostages. Right. And there, there as, they some... do, as they do. Yeah. Yes. Well. Uh... Yes. Um, okay. We're moving on. We'll look at some more images. That's a pretty um, uninteresting image. Alan, tell us the significance of this one. Yeah, the um, the Street View camera people were out on their travels. In this is Google mapping you're talking about, yeah, where you can yeah, actually the, not just the not just view, yeah. not just look from the earth. You can go down and actually wander yeah. around the streets. It's and of course, um, only a matter of a, a month or so ago, uh, the, it went live for most of the UK, mm -hmm. which was a major step mm -hmm. forward. This image apparently shows just a, a couple of boring old buildings with a barbed wire fence. But mm -hmm. if you look um, closely at the the sign mm -hmm. on the fence, it okay. says something like, this is a prohibited place within the meaning of the Official Secrets Act. Right. No photography, yeah. <laughs> no loitering, okay. no sketching, drawing. Yeah. And there we have the Google Street View car going past saying, Smile, you're on candid camera. Right. Okay. And that image uh, is actually being withdrawn from Google. Okay. Even though it doesn't actually show anything incriminating, you mm -hmm. can't see any. So what is this facility? It's actually here? the uh, special boat service. Um, their their depot, their facilities depot in Pool Harbour in Dorset. Right. And that whole street. So, and there are just either side of that mm -hmm. image, there are just residential streets, bungalows, okay. holiday homes. Mm -hmm. And that whole street has been removed from uh, and Google this Street. Image? That's um, a place called Hanslope Park, which sounds like a nice country retreat. Uh -huh. uh, and indeed, it, it, that's how it started off as a manor house. Right. Um, it has it's steeped in history. It uh, dates back to the early days of 
MI6. Mm -hmm. And it's actually formally known as the Her, Majesty's, Her Majesty's Government mm -hmm. Communications Centre. Okay. And it's where, I suppose you could say at a stretch, it's where James Bond gadgets are manufactured. All right, yeah. But, Pay uh, attention, 007, yeah, yeah, all that. In that sort of yeah. sense, it's stretching a point. But certainly yeah. it's unique in that uh, the facilities on site allow for manufacture of uh, PCBs, yes. uh, other devices, mm -hmm. all through to um, major yeah. end user. Okay. And ho yeah. who those end users are is... Yeah. Little gas speculation. canisters that allow you to breathe underwater for three minutes. Or, you know, <laughs> handy Rolex watches. Yeah, there's, you know. there's a dart. That, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and this one, GCHQ Edge Hills Test Facility. Well, that's uh, one of the more recent uh, research exclusives uh, on my website. In that, um, again, we're dealing with public domain information there. But uh, okay. that is in the middle of the Forest of Dean, a uh, very famous a tourist destination mm -hmm. in Gloucestershire. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually a test range. So it's it looks been... like a huge golf ball on top of a Meccano mm. tower. Yeah, it's um, it's actually two towers, uh, right. north and south, situated uh, so many metres apart in the middle of a clearing. They've mm -hmm. actually uh, got the Forestry Commission to clear the, the particular area of mm -hmm. the forest. Mm -hmm. And those two towers are uh, situated apart, and they're actually in direct line of sight with the GCHQ donuts back in Cheltenham. Oh, yes, yes. Yep. And that's why that um, particular location was chosen. However, it wasn't the first location chosen. Mm -hmm. the, the original one was over in Birdlip, mm -hmm. which is uh, another famous Cotswold um, uh, tourist area. Right. But it's also famous for having a ginormous uh, lattice tower on top of the hill there. Right. Uh, that, that dates back to World War Two era, the RAF. Mm -hmm. But so, what does this tower do, Alan? What's well, the, the two towers together, they actually they used to test uh, equipment that GCHQ are actually shipping out to armed forces overseas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, what, the precise details of that does it generate radio waves, or I presume it looks like it does. It's it, is, is the, it like an EM testing thing, or you? you yeah. You, you, yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, the, the precise details are classified. Not, by yeah. definition, I don't know right. the precise right. uh, details, but yeah. you can surmise that it's some kind of uh, telecoms right. equipment. It's, you maybe it's obviously not. To, um, it's not a laser right. weapon or anything okay. like that. You, know, you can. But you, you maybe assured. wouldn't want to um, stand next to it for too long, perhaps. Well, actually, um, the people who live in a cottage right in mm. the forest mm. yeah. uh, raised objections to the uh, the planning application, okay. and they were. Um, placated by the uh, <laughs> the people from the ministry yeah. who said that look we have to uh, stick by the rigid telecoms uh, guidelines and okay. you can rest assured it's quite safe. Mm. Interesting and this document here Alan what's what have we got here? Well the um, the most recent um, exclusive I did for one of the major newspapers was the revelation that the new e-borders mm -hmm. uh, system mm -hmm. the electronic borders mm -hmm. uh, running through a database system where everyone is checked going mm -hmm. in and out of the country mm -hmm. um, a secret document mm -hmm. and by secret i mean it was commercially sensitive rather than classified okay uh, this document came up in a google search whereas it was really meant to be hidden behind a member's only area in right a, okay in a, an aircraft uh, industry website right. and it actually revealed that the Queen herself mm -hmm. is going to be subject to these e-borders checks All right. so there's no more waving through Her Majesty right. saying no need for documents madam yeah. okay right and, and this next one well, this next one is um, the, the e-borders database center used to be um, centered at Heathrow Airport or on an industrial state mm -hmm. nearby and then it, uh, last year it was moved up to Manchester, mm -hmm. next to Manchester Airport, mm -hmm. although the precise location was kept secret. However, the eBoarders' own official website gave tiny clues as to its real location. Right. And I used those uh, tiny clues given in that picture there. They, they may seem I minute, see. but I used... So from that picture you could possibly tell where the thing is? Well, you, I did, yeah. I, I used my little tricks of the trade. Right. Uh, which I, I'm not revealing There's completely. There's not a lot to go on, is there? there? There's not yeah, a lot to go uh, on, and that's, in, uh, work that's out where my uh, <laughs> research magic came in. And uh, I used yeah. that image alone, right. 
and okay. admittedly a bit of local knowledge because right. I, I live in the Manchester area okay. uh, to to actually reveal that the building that they'd acquired for this yeah. uh, national border targeting centre is in and fact uh, on an industrial estate yeah. near Manchester Airport. And, and just to say that Alan has actually done a few little bits and pieces of research for things that I've been involved with in, in the past, but uh, you know we'll, we'll, we'll mention them on a, at another time, perhaps yeah. when, we when we've had a few drinks. More. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. And this next one, uh, Alan, Maple House. Well, this that is, that is in is fact the um, yeah that's the the document that I managed to find again freely available on right. the internet. Uh, I didn't have to hang around any dodgy pubs in right. South East London to, right. to acquire that document, okay. although you know, it's although, always an option. But yeah. <laughs> that was freely available on the internet, and it, it shows um, the, the particular building that I established was, in fact, the National Border Targeting ah, Centre. Right. The great okay. irony, and, and there it is in its uh, yeah, yeah. full glory. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, the fact is that there's another great irony, that I contacted... Uh, a senior um, journalist at ITN, mm -hmm. and he said, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, we, we know about that because mm -hmm. we're invited by the Home Office down uh, mm -hmm. to bring our cameras to... to mm -hmm. <laughs> and they were actually told mm -hmm. to, yeah, film here, mm -hmm. d do a piece to camera, but, you know, mm -hmm. keep it quiet, chaps. Right. OK. OK. And um, we're going to talk after the break about a couple of... Uh, stories that you've been involved mm. with that, 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 yeah. hit, that, that hit the national press. Um, I mean, just just to touch basically on the, on the secrecy element, just to reiterate, it's not. You seem to have collated this massive amount of information, mm. which um, is not secret in itself. But it, right. you, you would be hard pressed to find that information in one place on the net. I think your site is probably the only repository of such a vast amount of this information. Yeah, the, uh, the, lots of visitors to the website uh, they, they sort of um, fall into two two camps generally. Right. The, okay. the people who get it and people who don't really get it. Right. The people who get it are actually ent entertained by the, the spectacle of what they find there uh -huh. and the, uh, the they can learn from the research techniques that I describe right. uh, that involve fairly obvious things but Sort of subtle things like yeah. IP thing. addresses and things like that. Yes, I even go into avenues like that. But other people expect the website to perhaps be a stark list of, in alphabetical order, of supposed secret military bases in, yeah. in Britain. Okay. Whereas what I've actually used the website to do is to actually uh, illustrate research techniques that can be used by anyone and actually promote myself as a, um, a technical researcher. Okay then, Alan. Well, mm. we're just uh, we're going to um, introduce the artist of the week. We'll come back and talk okay. more in part three. And this week, um, I'm featuring Martin Stevenson and the Torags. Now, this song is all about the very strange remote village in northern Scotland called Barbaraville. Heed this advice for all that it's worth. Steer clear of the village on the Cromany Firth named Barbaraville. Up the road from Jemimaville, round the corner from Little Tedville, through the square windowville. to Barbaraville It's restless presence you'll instill There's a weird shine from the side of the road And a peering llama from a field of gold In Barbaraville An abandoned cycle with its wheel spinning round Radiation stains smoke on the ground Get out your car or you'll be gone in a flash There's a naked civil servant there looking for cash Beverville Beverville 
which screams and then a yell in the middle of the night. And then the music stops and everything still. Then it starts again of its own free will. Hitchhiker fingers on the window sills in Barbaraville. In Barbaraville. Barbaraville. There's people gone missing, but no one's been killed yet. In Barbaraville. In Look just like a net would cast Don't get out your car Or you'll be gone in a flash though House with the gnomes Let's out a strange kind of humming old Captain Boocock sits there banging his drum In Bavaravia Bavaravia Weird screams and then a yell In the middle of the night then the music stops and everything still and it starts again of its own free will Hit Jack's fingers on the window sill and advice for all in its word. Steer clear of the village on the Cromedy Firth named Babaraville. The Rich Planet Starship is sponsored by Geared4.com online bikes, clothing and accessories. The Rich Planet Starship is sponsored by Geared4.com online bikes, clothing and accessories. Welcome back on board the Starship, and we are joined by the Starship pet, Ulysses. Okay, it's time again for the interesting person of the week. And we've got Sam Wright again, who runs the Probe UFO and Paranormal Conference in Blackpool. And he's talking here about what happened after the uh, Kennedy assassination. A chap named Bill Holden, who worked for Air Force One, he came over about 14 years ago, and he spoke on the Kennedy assassination because uh, he worked under five presidents and when Kennedy was assassinated, when the, the uh, Nick Johnson was being uh, sworn in on the plane, the coffin was brought back onto the plane. They took off and they've only been in flight for about 30 minutes when the top security man said there was a fault with one of the engines. The plane landed and he being the top bloke on the, as a sergeant in security, he was told to go to the cargo area and the coffin was taken off and another coffin was brought back on its place and they only found out days later that in that coffin there were only stones so when that funeral was taking place with millions of people watching and the coffin was being lowered there was no body in that coffin just stones very interesting i think you'll agree okay which brings us to the interesting sign ah there's somebody at the airlock just one
Hope you've behaved yourself. Yes, the interesting scientific fact of the week is um, a thimbleful of a neutron star uh, would weigh over... Sorry. If you could get a thimbleful of a neutron star, it would weigh over 100 million tonnes. And we're talking with Alan Turnbull, who is an expert on UK military bases. Now, I'm interested in, because you get quite a lot of sensitive information but through your research. Say you get something that you think is really hot. Hmm. What do you do to... You know, do you just put it on the site, or do you no, have you I mean, got a that, means that would, of checking things? That would be clearly irresponsible. Um, essentially, what I do is uh, the same as any journalist down in London does. Mm -hmm. um, if I come into an area of research that highlights something quite important, mm -hmm. dangerous, whatever you want, mm -hmm. I'll run it by what's known as a, uh, the D Notice Committee, but more probably, um, it's the Defence Press and Broadcasting Advisory Committee, which okay. is a bit of a mouthful. Most people still refer to it as the D Notice Committee. Okay. And it's simply the liaison between uh, the Ministry of Defence, Government, uh -huh. and all the security. And is there an email address that you send it to, or do you ring them? Or it's how it's how normally by telephone, but telephone. yeah, there is an email address uh, okay. as well. And in fact, on very few occasions I've had to do so. Right. Um, I once for example, ran a particular image past uh, the Dino's committee that uh, I'd actually annotated with uh, a graphic uh -huh. and a description. And they said, well, we'd rather you didn't include that particular graphic, but right. we're okay with the rest of it. Right, okay. Uh, obviously, I can't go into details of what right. that image was, but okay. um, and at no stage has the D-Notice uh, committee ever approached me and said, yeah. oh, you must... Yeah, I think that's probably Delete. the way that, that I would prefer to do it. Wait for them to come yeah. to me, you know, because I'm, I'm, I'm not as, shall we say, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, reckless? Yeah, I'm probably a bit more <laughs> reckless. I don't, I don't know if that's the, uh, the word. Because yeah. I, I think that a lot of the information that I uncover and I find, I don't really care if it's sensitive because I believe it needs to be told because I think yeah, that, you have a different view of the intelligence agencies in general to what I do that I, I think they are to a degree doing things that they shouldn't let's just leave it at that and you perhaps don't share that view well I mean it's not a, it's just that uh, us two we're totally different animals really because you're you're um, interested in a particular alternative, yeah. you know, you, non-official you, non versions yeah. of... Whereas I'm just yeah. carrying on what essentially any other journalist does, mm -hmm. and that is investigative work mm -hmm. um, which, which brings us nicely, Alan, to the head of MI6. Ah, um, you were, <laughs> I was, I was you waiting were, for that subject to come up. Yeah. yeah, you were involved in discovering his Facebook account. Is that, tell yeah. us about that, Alan. I'll just need to take a sip of water. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, there was a big hullabaloo about that mm -hmm. uh, in summer last year, mm -hmm. and it was a scoop. Uh, mm -hmm. I managed to get uh, a world scoop, and it, as everyone remembers, it went right around the world. There was uh, pictures of uh, the new MI6 boss in his speedos mm -hmm. on the beach somewhere. Okay. Um, and we just, you know, we're not that kind of show, so I'm not going to show that image or no. any of the other images that were revealed of his wife and his daughter. You know, but, but tell us about the... the well, it was simply that I, I through my research magic, uh -huh. found a way um, into the, the world of the MI6 uh -huh. chief. And it was simply because um, his, his wife had not posted anything damaging. It was just that the fact that she'd not um, put the correct privacy settings on, on the Facebook, the Facebook account, as simple right. as that. And that, that's a lesson to everyone who uses Facebook, Facebook. and every right. other website out there, okay. that you've got to get the privacy yeah. settings. If you don't want the whole world to yeah. see it, you can eat it. I mean, the uh, the, there was uh, no malice intended. I was just after a research exclusive. I mean, some I people might say that even if you have got your privacy settings set on Facebook, the people who own Facebook actually can dabble into your oh, personal sure. yeah, information. Yeah. But um, so you then s gave that story to, was it the Daily Mail? It was the Mail on Sunday, and, uh, and that was their 
it, it was actually nominated for Scoop of the Year in the, right. the Press Awards. Uh, it obviously it, it lost out to the um, the huge story of right. the year, which was the MP's expenses. Okay. But uh, so this is the head of MI6 running around the beach with his trunks on, and we're not supposed to know the identity of this guy. Is that? Oh, no, because no, they mean, did used to keep them, the identity secret, didn't they? Yeah, for I mean, for, for, for several uh, generations of, uh, yeah. of boss now that we've, we've known the uh, identity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, it's, um, obviously, I'm, I'm off the Christmas card list uh, right. at MI6. And really? Yeah. I, I thought you, you, you sometimes get invited down, don't you? Know? Oh, ah, no, you, you see, that, with... that a lot of people that uh, follow the, my website think I'm some how involved in uh, the murky world of right. whatever goes on in Whitehall. Right. Um, that may be due to uh, my fault, really, that I've overdone the explanation of my relationship with the, the D-Notice uh, system. Okay. And it's just any journalist knows the D-Notice system. They, they go through it. And it's a okay. way of actually allowing scoops, uh -huh. uh, news exclusives, to go out, but not compromising really important things like live uh, yeah. SAS operations. For yes. example, rescuing hostages in Sierra Leone. Yeah. You don't want a, a news exclusive going out on that yes. while the operation is still live yeah. because people's lives are at risk. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. essentially what the D-Notice system is all about. And another story that you were involved in or you find, found tidbits of information was the, again, it's more sleazy, the, the, the Max Mosley um, who's the you know the, the Formula One mm. boss, who basically was going to party parties with parties, them, with yes, friends, yes, and they, uh, they weren't Tupperware parties either. No. Uh, so tell us about that. <laughs> well, I, I don't normally sully myself with yeah. the tabloidy sleazy. Yes, yeah. I, I rise above it. But yeah. on this occasion, <laughs> I I thought I'd yeah. dabble a little bit. Yeah. So I entered the murky world of. Uh, Tabloid what is the plural of dominatrix? Is it dominatrices? Um, pass. Perhaps we could yeah. have a, a quiz yeah. on that. Yeah. But <laughs> I so provided key research, um, obviously not the main story, but uh -huh. I provided uh, a certain nuance mm. to the story that revealed the so person behind the website yeah. who... So the, tell us the story from the beginning then, just quickly. Not that we want to dwell on this well, for too long. Um, uh, I realised that uh, one particular document that I found uh -huh. on uh, the mistress's website. So this was a, a, a mistress, Abby. allegedly, of Max Mosley. Well, she, she was just can we a... Say that? Um, um, no, she wasn't a mistress of Max Mosley. Um, I can hear the lawyers in the background. Oh, uh, okay. She was um, a party hostess, shall party we say. Party hostess. Um, and he attended the party. The particular party, yeah. yeah or the party. But he wanted a tail. He, he, wanted, he hired, a, hired a private detective or firm of oh, private yeah, detectives I mean, that, that, to find out who was spilling information. Yeah. And it turned out that, that this woman's husband was actually an MI5 agent. Yeah, and that, of course all the conspiracy theorists went into overdrive then thinking uh -huh. that it was um, a set-up job. In right. fact, it was um, purely... I think so they'd, they'd run into financial difficulties and uh, he'd been naughty and, and not telling his uh, bosses... Uh -huh. Uh, about the MI5 his wife. agents yeah. had been naughty yeah. in that the MI5 it, didn't know that his wife was a precisely. advertising her services, mm. etc. So what happened to and the, the MI5 agent? He realised he'd been followed because of his counter-terrorism training or whatever. Exactly, yeah. And then he alerted... Well, he, found, he found himself being tailed by this mystery vehicle. It which was Mosley's employee. It was Mosley's yeah. uh, private detective. Yeah. Yes. And then he then alerted the... what. The anti-terror squad or something? Or well, um, obviously, uh, the MI5 officer would have alerted his bosses back at Thames House and said, uh, we've got a problem, I'm being followed. Yeah. Um, so they mm -hmm. obviously found the vehicle details and uh -huh. phoned them up, and it was this private detective agency. Yeah. Uh, and and I they think said, why on earth uh, are you following this vehicle? And yeah. he said, this is why. And then uh, the whole story exploded then. Right. And uh, didn't... Um, Mosley sue not because he was at the party but because of what he was wearing at the party if they got that wrong yeah. or something mm. <laughs> did they say that he was dressed as a nazi or something like that yeah in, uh, in, it was in, the uh, specific so he uh, didn't deny nazi overtones uh, right yeah. yeah okay <laughs> the mind boggles but i mean my my small involvement in that story was that i provided key uh, forensic internet research 
uh -huh. for a particular aspect of the story, and I found uh, the person's name who designed the mistress's website mm -hmm. uh, by sort of magical means. Mm -hmm. But I thought I'd actually found the the name of the MI5 officer who right. was married to the. To the one. I mean, yeah. that would have been right. massively okay. explosive that story. But it okay. turned out to be just an associate, a friend, uh -huh. uh, who happened to be a film director based in London. Okay. So. Okay. And um, what about the future, Alan? How, how do you see your website panning out? Have you got any plans or what's the, what, what are your objectives for this? I feel as though I've been on a bit of an incredible journey uh, with the website. Started off quite humble beginnings. I've managed to um, hone my uh, research skills, talents, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And I've got to the stage now where as, as I've described earlier, that I've uh, been responsible for several major research exclusives mm -hmm. um, that have re resulted in front page uh, sort of splashes in the, the mm -hmm. Sunday papers. I'd like to um, expand on that mm -hmm. and actually treat, obviously I'll continue doing the, the website uh, from an entertainment point of view and a, and a, a technical, mm -hmm. uh, almost educational point of view, but. Mm -hmm. I want to actually use the skills that I've developed over all these years, since 2003. Mm -hmm. I've achieved all these results mm -hmm. in the recent uh, years. I want to develop that further and uh, carry on in the world of investigative journalism. Okay. I've ended up attending uh, drinks receptions in Whitehall mm -hmm. to do with the D-Notice Committee, where I've, I've met not one, but two directors general of MI5 itself. Okay. Um, and, and can you remember who they were? Yes. Um, I mean, it was a bizarre situation. I met uh, Dame Eliza Manning and Buller. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that was. I mean, she's written a few books now, hasn't she? About no, that, that, that's that? The, that, that was uh, Stella Remington. Yes, Stella yeah. Remington. Have you met Stella Remington? No. No, you haven't. Right, okay. Um, but, uh, I mean, the bizarre spectacle of being introduced to Dame Eliza Manning and Buller, uh -huh. uh, it, it was a bit like. Um, I guess Daniel LaRue being uh, introduced to the Queen at the London yeah. Palladium. Well, I mean, admittedly... <laughs> Don't put yourself down, Alan. <laughs> well, it, uh, with hindsight, it was a mistake, me launching into a couple of verses of uh, Mother Kelly's doorstep. But, right. Uh, <laughs> I, I'd had a few, you know. Right, OK. <laughs> right, and do you think that the heads of MI5 and MI6 are informed of everything? Or do you think, you know, you're, you're aware of the phrase, the need to know, hmm. where people, are, the information is compartmentalised. Do you think that the heads of MI5 and MI6 are like the Prime Minister, just figureheads and don't have detailed knowledge of the comparted projects going on? Or do you think they oversee it all? What, what do you think? Hmm. Now, you're straying into the, the land of uh, the New World, World Order and... Uh, yeah, well... Yeah. <laughs> You don't want to answer that question, then. No, I'm, I have an opinion on. Uh, I think we don't need to worry about n n the new world order. The, the it's the old world order okay. that always has been and always uh -huh. will be the problem. Uh -huh. In that a few select elite at the, the top of society uh -huh. control everything that goes on. Uh -huh. um, and you That's, think there's a secret society influence over the intelligence agencies? Um, it always used to be. I remember being at school and being told that uh, you c could not rise above a certain rank in the, the police force okay. without being a Freemason or something like that. Yeah. I mean, that is actually insulting to a, a lot of hard-working people mm -hmm. who pass all the inspectors' exams, mm -hmm. uh, etc., and achieve promotion. Mm -hmm. uh, the I legitimate think it, route. But. This is probably where you and I would part company, mm. and you know we we could. Oh, I certainly agree that it uh, it oils a lot of cogs, doesn't it? Being yeah. being a member of a certain fraternity. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, but I would guess that more secret deals are done on the golf course than at mm -hmm. the uh, the Grand Lodge. Okay. All right, and Alan, is there, is there anything else you want to add? Well, I'd, I'd just like to say that um, it's. It's very kind of you to invite me on this uh, no program because I'm not your normal sort of guest, am I really? Well, I don't I've think not I've got any UFO sort of stories guest. to tell you. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've had a few, um, not, not so much out-of-body experiences, but I've had lots of out-of-head experiences. Right. Me. Was that alcohol-induced or...? It probably, yes. Right. Okay, then. Um, well, we'll get you beamed back down to planet Earth, and thanks very much indeed for coming in. Thank you. Okay, and it just remains for me to say, keep your eyes on the skies and your feet on the ground and tell all your friends about this show.
The Rich Planet Starship is sponsored by Geared4.com online bikes, clothing and accessories. A Down syndrome lady aged 30 who suffered sexual abuse from her father and a paedophile ring based in Aberdeen. The abuse started in 1986 and continued until the year 2000. Grieg has named 14 of her abusers, who include a Scottish sheriff called Graeme Buchanan, a high-ranking police officer, now deceased, and social workers, and several others. The Scottish legal system, under the direction of Lord Advocate Elish Angelini, is providing protection of this paedophile ring. Robert Green, who was campaigning for perpetrators of Holly Greek's abuse to be brought to justice, was arrested in February. He was headed to Aberdeen City Centre to hand out leaflets to the public and was arrested on a charge of breach of the peace and subsequently held for three days. Robert Green was arrested again last week on the Thursday the 15th of April and released on bail a second time, we believe for breaching his bail conditions which state that he should not talk to the media about the case. The police stations dealing with his arrest and detention received a stream of phone calls from the public protesting at the police's draconian behaviour. To find out more about this disturbing case, which goes to the highest levels of our government, please Google Holly Grieg and spread the information to friends and family as the mainstream news media have been censored from covering the story. On the 15th of April, Barack Obama announced to a small audience, By the mid-2030s, I believe we can send humans to orbit Mars and return them safely to Earth. And a landing on Mars will follow, and I expect to be around to see it. This comes just a few weeks after cancelling future missions to the Moon. In addition to budgets for the Space Shuttle, International Space Station and other publicly known projects by NASA, there is a secret project, or a secret budget, known as the Black Budget, consisting of trillions of dollars raised outside of Congress in a variety of nefarious ways. This means that what NASA allow the public to see is only window dressing for a much bigger and more advanced clandestine program to dominate and weaponize space. When Gary McKinnon accessed NASA computers in 2002, he found a list of officers' names under the heading Non-Terrestrial Officers that included fleet-to-fleet -fleet transfers and a list of ship names that were not US Navy ships. McKinnon believes that the ships and personnel files he saw were from a space program that operates off-planet spaceships and maintains several secret space stations. What adds weight to McKinnon's claims is what the late Ben Rich said. Rich was the second director of Lockheed's Skunk Works, who developed America's secret aircraft. In 1993, he said, We already have the means to travel among the stars, but these technologies are locked up in black projects, and it would take an act of God to ever get them out to benefit. The Rich Planet Starship is sponsored by Geared4.com online bikes, clothing and accessories. Welcome on board the Rich Planet Starship, broadcasting from somewhere high above the Earth. I'm Richard D. Hall, and we've been reliably informed by viewers of Edge Media Television that in certain households, when people switch Edge Media Television on, a member of the household will walk out of the room in disgust. This presumably is because they can't handle the truth. Now, at the Rich Planet Starship, we've come up with a solution for this. Good evening. Every week at the beginning of the six o'clock news, we'll be hearing from our special new correspondent, Richard D. Hall, who has been tasked by BBC bosses to break all BBC news traditions and report the absolute truth with no spin. Over to you, Richard. Uh, thank you, George. Um, the much hyped first ever election leadership debate was screened on the 15th of April. The atmosphere in the studio was most peculiar, as the audience had clearly been hand-picked 
and then told not to speak, react or ask questions. The three leaders demonstrated in their debate that there is now no alternative party. They broadly agree on almost everything. Why is there no party or person telling them that the war on terror is bogus and has been created by a series of false flag events carried out by our own intelligence agencies, including 9-11 and 7-7? That the occupation of Iraq and Afghanistan are illegal under international law? that the Trident nuclear program is illegal under international law, that the immigration problem is to a degree exaggerated by the media in order to maintain fear of Islam so that the public continues to support the illegal occupations, that the financial crisis and economic boom and bust cycle could be easily solved by simply removing the Bank of England and ending the issuance of currency as debt then allowing the government to issue its own currency, thus removing the richest families in the world who have cajoled themselves into owning the Bank of England and Federal Reserve, which then enslave the population in an economic prison without bars. And that there is a move by globalists who operate above government to remove sovereign nations by stealth and create a single world government behind our backs. Where was the candidate with these views? We reported two weeks ago about the case of Holly Griffith Humanity. Anything you can imagine, we already know how to do. Obama's announcement about missions to Mars and the dog and pony show which will follow is nothing but a diversion from the secret space program in order to keep the public in the dark. It's time to introduce this week's guest onto the show. He is a researcher of UK military bases. His website, secretbases.co.uk, contains a vast compilation of aerial photography and research into the military and intelligence agencies. So without further ado, let's activate the teleporter and get him beamed up onto the ship. Alan Turnbull. Oh. Welcome Hello. on the Starship, Alan. Thank you, Richard. Are you well? I'm not too bad. It's a marvellous way to get up here. I avoided the volcanic ash. <laughs> Absolutely. OK, Alan, um, we're here to talk about your fantastic website, um, which I've spent hours and hours on, I have to say, because there's a phenomenal amount of information on there. Um, could you start by telling us just how you got into creating this website? Well, it uh, started back in uh, 2003. Um, it was that year that I became first connected uh, up to the internet by, by broadband and as you know uh, many customers on broadband um, get 